Inclusive education means schooling for everyone, everywhere, at any time, and, and not segregating individuals based on their needs. Here, they make him feel like he's just another kid. He's just like everybody else. There's nothing different. Mm -hmm. Six times seven. Forty-two, right? The fact is that Alberta will be changing as a province. It will be growing in population as time goes on. Everyone really kind of has like a respect for everyone's different culture and religion and everything. They don't care where I come from. They treat me as an equal. When I first came through here, it was just instant smiles. Like I felt really comfortable and welcomed and I think that has a big role in about parents coming into the school and wanting their children to come here. When you're looking at, at becoming an inclusive society, there really isn't a beginning or an end. It, it is all about the process. It is all about becoming accepting and becoming inclusive and not reaching a, a finite goal. He has difficulty getting into a bigger chair, so they've made it so that he can get into a chair by himself. He can reach his stuff in his locker. There's wheelchair accessible buttons for the doors. So there's a lot of things that they've done to make it easier for all students. If you have a child that may have a special learning need that needs to be accommodated, not only is the child learning at a pace that the child can absorb at, but all the other students are learning actually about the fact that we're not all the same, that there are others that need attention from time to time and, and start realizing that uh, that's what life is really all about. This has all the suggestions yes. of the poppy leaves, yes? You know? They're very nice and they're good friends. They took the patience to learn lots about me. He has autism, but that doesn't really mean that there's anything wrong with him. It's just what the doctor says. As a, as a minister and as government, our role is to lead by example. The diversity of the roles that a teacher actually has in the classroom has to be equally reflected by the delivery of services that the government brings into schools. The teachers are really supportive. They also give us like apps and links on their websites and stuff. Those are really helpful if you need extra help on some subjects. I can't read as fast as others, right? So they'll like they'll take it into a tape recorder and read it out. And they'll put it on the iPod, so I can listen to it through earbuds. Them reading the test, and I can rewind it, pause it, play back. Um, it's really cool. Now, because of the technology that is available, you don't know if someone is using a laptop because they have a learning disability or they're just using a laptop. Really nice and loud. I am reading good at writing. As government, we, we need to foster the atmosphere of inclusion, uh, the atmosphere of accommodation, um, and, and allowing every child to know that uh, he or she, whatever their circumstances may happen to be, um, will have the opportunity to flourish to the maximum of, of their potential. When I came here, I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I had no idea. I just wanted to finish school, that's all. But now I have plan set out for my future because of the help I got here. Having students come out of a school and be embracing and accepting and becoming good, compassionate, active citizens in their community, what more can you ask for? We got to talking about what we could do in our community to better the lives of gay students. One of the suggestions that came out of that was that um, I could maybe try starting a Gay-Straight Alliance. Even if it's changing the attitudes of one student at a time, I think that it's, it's important and it, it's happening. Okay, I'll see you later. Good night. I today cannot predict what our province will look like 20 years from now, but I can assure you of one thing. We today can make sure that our children will be ready to accept and embrace the Alberta of then, whatever it may look like.
Thanks very much, Natalie, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. It is a real pleasure to be here. For those of you that don't know me, I've sometimes re been referred to as the passionate driver behind Action on Inclusion. And now in my new role as the Director of Early Learning, I have the privilege of working with each and every one of you, leaders in the journey to ensure that every one of our Alberta's children and their families experience a world where they are valued, belong, and feel that they're making a contribution. Inclusion. It's not a place. And assuming that we have successfully included if we've addressed proximity is only fooling ourselves. Rather, it's a process that facilitates a way of being in the world so that all of our behaviors and our decisions reflect that our society really does value all to the same degree. I'm excited to be in my new position. Over the past couple of years, I've watched Gail Campbell, her team, and all of you embrace this work wholeheartedly, jump with both feet into the journey, and make meaningful contribution towards improving the lives of children and their families. You have demonstrated through events like today that you understand that delivering on the ambition of creating and facilitating inclusion in the early years begins in every Alberta home, every community, every child care center, every preschool, and every kindergarten class. A deliberate and methodical approach to harnessing and nurturing children, our most valuable resource, is essential to realizing the potential for every family. In partnership with families and communities, the Government of Alberta has an opportunity to leverage what we know about early learning, children's brain development in the early years, the power of play, and the realities of life for families to create stronger communities made up of resilient children in supported families. Early experiences are so influential in the first few years of life because the basic architecture of the brain is constructed through an ongoing process that begins before birth and continues into adulthood. Early experiences affect the quality of this architecture by establishing either a sturdy or a fragile foundation for all of the learning, health, and behavior to follow. Over the years, with my involvement in moving towards building an inclusive education system, I've always known in my heart that this audience really understands the vision of inclusion and I've witnessed today that you have a plan to show the world what an implemented, inclusive, early learning world really looks like. I've observed that you've already decided that we need to be on this journey together to collaborate and create fluidity and seamlessness in our work. You've already decided that our decisions about moving forward needs to have a strong foundation in evidence-based research, and you've already decided that celebrating promising practices and good news stories helps us stay motivated, inspired, and moving forward. We've had affirmed for us today that successful learning environments include opportunities for children to develop in the areas of creativity, fle flexibility, self-control, and discipline. And integral to these environments is inclusive practice. Inclusion is an attitude and a belief in the value of everyone. An inclusive environment affirms that it's okay and wonderful to be you. Our little people said it best at the end of the minister's video. It's okay to be small. It's okay to lose some teeth. It's okay to be adopted. It's okay to have different dreams. It's okay to cry. It's okay to have a little money. It's okay to have different friends. It's okay to be on wheels. It's okay to share your toys. It's okay to speak a different language. And it's really okay to have five or three or four twins. Your ongoing work and your commitment and passion towards moving us forward on an early learning agenda 
is a reason to celebrate. Thank you for all that you do, and it's a privilege to be working with you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.